Let's learn in this video how to attach an Azure Blob Fuse to an AKS Azure Kubernetes Service cluster using Managed Identity. Stateful applications hosted into a Kubernetes cluster might use an external storage solution like the Azure Disk or the Azure File Share or the Blob Containers. For those Blob, you have two options, either to use the NFS or we use the Blob Fuse. For the case of a Blob Fuse, you have different options to authenticate to that uh, storage account. So either we use the storage account key or we can use the SAS token. We can use the service principle, an SPN, or a fourth option, which is the recommended one, is to use a native Azure managed identity. And that is the option that we'll explore in our demo today. So with that, the architecture of our solution will be like this. So we have here a pod that wants to connect to a blob container within an Azure storage account, that pod actually will use or the CSI driver will go to authenticate to that uh, blob container using a managed identity. For that reason, we have here created a managed identity with the role storage blob data owner for this storage account so that it will be able to access to that blob and write into that blob. Then we attach that managed identity into the virtual machine states, uh, states uh, stateful set or the VMSS, which is the node pool for our cluster. Note here that should be the VMSS for the system node pool, not the applications node pool, because that authentication actually will be handled by the CSI uh, driver, which is already installed into the system node pool, into the queue. Uh, into the cube system namespace in Kubernetes. So that configuration actually looks like any config if you want to uh, deploy or if you want to attach dynamically or statically uh, a blob fuse into your pod in a Kubernetes. So you will go to create the PV and also the PVCs. So and in the PV there on the persistent volume there, you will configure that authentication through one of the four options that I have mentioned. So in the PV, PV configuration here, we can view in this section for the CSI, the volume attributes. We can view here if I want to connect using that managed identity, I will here uh, go to provide the resource group, the storage account and the container name here because I'm using the static provisioning for my blob fuse. I'm not using the dynamic provisioning. Okay, for dynamic provisioning means that it's IKS will go to dynamically provision a new service account, configure it and configure the access to the blobs inside. With static um, configuration, it means that it's up to the customer to create its own um, storage account. It's bring your own storage account and then uh, configure AKS to use that existing storage account. So that storage account will be customer managed instead of being um, Azure managed. For that, we need to configure ourselves that authentication between the CSI driver and our storage account blob containers. And that's what will be done in this section right here where we choose first the authentication method. So an Azure storage of type. Here we have actually four options, either the storage account key, a SaaS token, managed identity or the service principle. With managed identity, we specify MSI and then we can provide one of these three um, attributes here, Azure storage identity client ID or object ID or the resource ID. Okay, one of them, not the three are recommended. And then we specify the MSI uh, endpoint, which is the uh, static IP address 168. We can keep it empty because it will use the default one unless we change it we keep it uh, empty. And then Azure Storage SPN Client ID. This case, if we want to use the SPN feature for authentication, if we don't use it, we just keep it empty or don't we just skip it from the YAML file. And then the old method actually was using the node stage uh, secret reference. So with this one, this means that we'll go to provide the uh, SAS uh, key or the storage account key into a Kubernetes secret and then we reference that secret from the persistent volume right here. Now with MSI, we don't need any more this config. We just need the config to provide the uh, managed identity, uh, resource ID, object or client. So here I have put the link for those different configurations for, uh, from the uh, Azure storage uh, fuse um, a project which is hosted on GitHub and I have provided also uh, many other uh, 
documentation for you to get more to know this how it works. Now I'll work you through a demo for how this works, how we can attach that blob fuse to an AKS cluster using a managed identity. But first here, I want to show you here the official GitHub repository for the uh, blob fuse uh, project, which is available as an open source project under the Azure uh, repository right here, where we can view the different releases and the code source from there and the documentation also. Uh, and I have uh, my demo today is um, highly inspired from the documentation and from the examples provided uh, right here. So I have provided another, let's say, um, a more sample uh, lab to follow, okay, that will go from zero to uh, the full install or the full exploration of the features of uh, the blob fuse. So in this GitHub repo, I have provided the scripts and also the YAML files that we'll need right here with the small description for what we want to achieve. So typically we'll go to set up the environment and then we'll go to create the storage account, managed identity, and then attach the volume using that managed identity. The overall architecture is described here. And then here you will get the different uh, steps for how this works. So let's start our demo then. So from here, I have already cloned that GitHub repo in my local machine. And here I can view the readme file. And also I have that YAML uh, file that I'll be using to create the persistent volume and also the persistent uh, volume claim along with the deployment that will go to attach to that uh, blob fuse as a deployment. So let's get started. I switch here to the command line where here actually I have uh, created or started creating the Kubernetes cluster and they have set up some variables that I'm going to need through this demo like the name of the resource group for AKS, the name of my cluster, the name of the storage account that I'll go to create, the name of the container and the name of the managed identity. Then I have created a new resource group, I have created the AKS cluster and I have enabled the blob driver within that cluster. Then I have connected to my cluster and when I get the nodes, I get my three nodes that I configured. Next, because I have enabled the uh, CSI driver, I will get here if I do get pods from the cube namespace and grab CSI here, I will see those three pods because that will run as a daemon set into my cluster. So three nodes and three pods in, for the blob CSI. Next here, I go to create a storage account because here we are simulating that we have already a storage account and we want to connect to a blob within that storage account. So I use az storage account create the name of the storage account, the resource group note here, I'm using the same resource group as the AKS cluster that is not um, uh, mandatory. You can choose any other resource group actually. And then specify the location, the SQ, I'm using premium ZRS with the kind block blob storage. Not for those um, values, they might change in the future, but today that is the required actually to create that storage account with type of block blob storage. Great, now I have my storage account uh, created. Next, I'll go to create a container within that storage account. So I'll use here az storage container create, provide the storage name and then the name of my uh, container and it tells me here that was created uh, successfully. Next, I'll go to upload a blob into that uh, container. So I'll do that. First, I need to get the storage account key. Okay, for that I'm using storage account key list, then getting that storage account from the command line. And next I go to use storage blob upload and I'll go to upload a file that is called blob file.html. Let's go to take a look at that file in a second. So that's a sample HTML file that will just go to display a uh, hello world into my web page. So uh, what I'm trying to do here is that I go to get this, uh, get access to this file from an Nginx pod in Kubernetes. Okay, so this file will be hosted in the storage account in the blob and my pod in AKS will get access to this uh, file and use it. So this um, scenario might be used for the static web applications where you save your HTML, your JavaScript and CSS files into a blob and then you serve 
uh, you serve your application from a pod in a Kubernetes cluster and you expose it through a service. We'll go to simulate this. It could be used either for this or for storing file, other type of files or storing database and so on. So let's continue on that. Let's go to upload this uh, storage blob. Once it's uploaded right here, we can actually go to the Azure portal and view the creation of these resources. So from here, I'll go to the Azure portal to the resource group where I have created both the AKS cluster and the storage account. If I go there and then I go to containers and not for this storage account, it has this account kind block blob storage. If I go to containers, I'll see the container I've created earlier, container 01 and I see it's not working, so I'll go to fix that. How I'm gonna do here, I go to assign myself the admin role or a contributor role over that storage account. So I'll get my own user ID using the command az id sign it in user, show my ID, and then I'll get the storage account ID. Okay, then after that, I go to assign myself a role over that storage account, and the role here would be the storage account contributor. Let's assign that uh, rule. And once that rule will be reflected, now we can go to back to the storage account, to the containers and to our container 01. And yes, from here, I can view that uploaded file, the blob file.html. I can click on it and I can click edit to view the content of that file. And that is HTML file inside the blob attached to AKS. Great, let's continue our demo. Now we'll go to create the managed identity. So for that here, I'll be using the command line in order to create that uh, managed identity. So I'll go to use az identity create, then create it in the same resource group as my AKS. And again, this is not mandatory. You can choose another resource group to do that. Once that storage account is created, we'll go to assign it the right airbag role. So I need to get first the client ID of that managed identity and then use az role assignment create and I'll go to assign to that managed identity the role storage blob data owner. It means it will be able to write in, into that blob, delete it, create it, and so on. So I'll give this role to the managed identity. And because later with my uh, AKS uh, CSI driver, it's, it will go to use this managed identity in order to authenticate and authorize to that storage account. So with this config here, now if I go back to the Azure portal where I have the RG AKS cluster, if I go to refresh, then I should see a new resource created with type managed identity. And within this managed identity, if I go to role assignments, I should see here the role that I have created, storage blob data owner. And that if I go to associated resources, here actually it should display the name of the VMSS where it is attached to. Here it's not yet attached to a VMSS, so let's go to attach it uh, there. So I'll go back to the command line and then I'll do identity, I'll get the identity ID. Then I'll go to get the node resource group here. I want to get actually the virtual machine scale set name. So I'll use that node RG in order to query it from my resource group. So I query the list of the VMSS and then I'll go to assign the identity to my VMSS and that's the identity that I have created earlier. So whilst this uh, doing its job, so actually in our AKS cluster for now we have two managed identities. If I go back here to the resource groups, to the MC resource group, you should see that we already have an existing managed identity that is the cluster agent pool. So you can use this one if you want to, but this identity will be attached to the all, all the node pools within the, your cluster. It means to the user node pool and also to the system node pool. However, here for uh, accessing the blob views, we want to attach that managed identity to only the system node pool. Okay, so uh, because the CSI driver again lives inside only the system node pool or the cube system uh, namespace. So it's better to create another uh, managed identity uh, specifically for this, uh, uh, for this purpose. 
We can view now that uh, identity was assigned to that virtual machine scale set. So now if I go back to the VMSS for my cluster, this is the uh, single one, means that's the system VMSS. And if I go scroll to the identity, we don't have a system identity because we have created a user assigned identity. And here we can view that user assigned uh, identity uh, from here. So now my pods in my uh, cluster or the CSI driver can use it right here. But we still need to do a last uh, thing right here, which is configuring the persistent uh, volume. So what I'm going to do here is that I'll go to the command line again. Let's go to clear this one and I'll go to configure the persistent uh, volume. So I'm creating persistent volume and note here for the CSI uh, section, I want to configure the authentication with the managed identity. For that, I need to provide first the name of the resource group where I want to connect to and its resource group and the container name. And then I provide here the authentication type, which is of type MSI for managed identity. And then I provide the identity ID and I'll write that into a file called blobfuse.yaml. Then after that, I'll go to deploy the application. So for the application, actually, we have a few other uh, files. Let me show you those different files. So we have mainly the um, let's start from here. We have mainly the Nginx uh, deployment that we're going to create that will go to mount. Uh, the volume, which is the blob fuse, and it's exposed as a public uh, service or through a load balancer. And then we have the persistent volume that I have uh, created uh, right here. So if I go to expand this one, we can view that uh, persistent uh, volume available uh, from here. So it will show, it will use the MSI and it will reference the managed identity ID from here. And then we would have the PVC or the persistent volume claim, which would go to use the storage class name, the Azure Blob Fuse uh, Premium, or you can also create your own storage class. And for the storage, I specify 100 gigabytes because as per today, the minimum required for premium is uh, 100. Great. So with that, now I'm ready to go to deploy my application. So I'll go to deploy the three files using cube control apply and then I'll get the pods and I see I have one pod started creating and I would have here a service called Nginx app that will be exposed on a public IP. Let's give it a few seconds and let's try again. And here we can view that service will be exposed on this public IP. Let's copy it to use it and then we can view the PVC with capacity 100 gigabytes and our pod is running successfully. Let's go to verify that the pod or that the blob storage was mounted uh, successfully. So what I'm going to do here again using the command line, I'll go to first get the name of the pod. That's going to be this pod right here. So I'll use the command get pods using the labels and then specifying the name of that pod. And then I'll go to exec into that pod and use the command df-h to show the mounted volumes. And here we can view the uh, mounted uh, volumes uh, right here. And you can view the blob fuse uh, 2, which uses here this uh, uh, volume. And it's mounted into the user share nginx.html because that's what I have done in my deployment file. Let's go back to check that again because that's important. So if I go here, so yes, here I have mounted that volume into the user share nginx HTML. That's the default uh, folder where nginx pods will put the configuration for the uh, HTML or for the static files actually. Now we can go to exec and run another command which is ls. And ls here will show us the content of that HTML folder. And sure enough, we can view that blob file.html, which comes from the Azure storage account blob container. Great. So now my Nginx will serve that HTML file through the slash blob file.html. Let's go again to check that from the Azure portal. So I grab the service the public service uh, public IP. And within my browser, I can view, so on that URL, 
I can have here the text that was written into a file into the Azure um, blob container uh, where we have used the managed identity in order to authenticate to that container. Great.